Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the build video of our beeper, our beep diode tester. And as you can see, I've got the boards from PCB Way. They are sponsoring the video. Thank you, PCB Way. And as expected, or as I've come to expect, the boards are perfect. Now, I say the boards are perfect, the execution of the boards were perfect, according to the Gerbers that I put up. Now we'll have to just check whether my uh, design is perfect, because I received quite a lot of comments and emails about this project. Some of them were helpful, some of them were critical, some of them were, what the hell are you doing that for? I'll answer the last question first, because I can. <laughs> I enjoy messing with these things. I don't always look for a payback, a utility, a rate of return. That's not what this is about. This is my hobby. I like playing around with it. It's uh, electronics old and new. We've got old, the tubes, and we've got new, the microcontroller units. So I like just uh, jumping around depending on what my fancy takes me. And this time it took me to doing this. Now, let's go to the more uh, constructive comments. I made a note of uh, some of the comments I received. And let me tell you sort of very briefly what they range from. They range from not using this Arduino Nano because it is, well, it's bigger than it needs to be which is kind of ironic considering this thing is bloody small. But I agree, I agree. And it does consume more power than some alternatives. And as a result, I've got myself another one, which may make some of you happy and will probably raise the ire of some others. This is, this is a Seed Studio Chao ESP32C3. It comes with an actual Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna, which I'm not going to use. But look at this thing. This thing is minute. If you compare this to the uh, Arduino Nano, it's about a third of the size. And it's probably, I, I won't uh, classify it, but it's much, much more powerful than the Arduino Nano. For someone who did his um, thesis project at Varsity using an 80, what is it, an 8047? which had 2K of memory. That thing was, at the time, quite advanced. It, was, uh, it had RAM, it had ROM. And when I look at something like this, it's just amazing. Uh, I know for the younger generation, this is just par for the course. But for someone who grew up at the start of the uh, conversion to microcontrollers, I am fascinated. And this thing is unbelievable. This thing has got sleep mode. You can put this um, on sleep mode with programming. Uh, which means you don't really need to switch it off. You don't really need an on-off switch. Uh, because when it's on sleep mode, I think it draws like 47 nanoamps. Something stupidly low. And then when you push a button or do something that uh, calls an interrupt, it'll uh, turn it on and get this thing looping again. And then you create another condition where it goes into sleep, which could be sort of how long it stays inactive. So this thing is going to solve a few issues. One of them is the size that the board, the final board, needs to be. I mean, this is pretty big. Here's the, uh, the nano footprint. It's actually the same width. Yeah, it is. But it, okay, I said a third. It's about half the size. This thing will be coming out here, just like the other one did with the uh, USB-C port um, connectable to the outside, so you can program it. The whole idea here is that you can actually do a lot more than what this thing was programmed to do. This is overkill, and I don't mind. This thing cost me five bucks, five, 580, 5 euros 80 or something, it's about 6 bucks 50. It's got a couple of buttons. If you want to find out more about this, go and look uh, at some reviews specifically on the um, on the ESP32. There's a C3 and a C now there's a C6, but I didn't need some of those features. In fact, I don't need a lot of these features, but I'm going to go with this one for the next iteration anyway. The other thing was the battery. Now I'm using a 9 volt battery and this thing has a feature that some of the other small Chow um, boards don't have. This has got a battery charger. It's got a battery management and charger system incorporated. So you put this in your, in your circuit, you connect a 3.7 volt battery to those two points over there. And when you have your USB-C connected, it charges the battery. It's a very slow charge. I think it's like probably 50 milliamps, uh, which is very low. So it'll take a long time to charge a powerful battery. But then again, you don't really need a very powerful battery. So that is an option. Obviously, I can still use this one, but that is an option. 
and it certainly is quite useful if you want to make this thing self-standing without having to worry about uh, a big battery like this or having a another lithium mine or lithium polymer battery that you have to create a charging circuit for so that's another feature that that one has what was the other issue the other issue was um, the display some of you said and rightly so that you don't really need a display need no we don't need a display i like a display but you don't need a display because if you create the different beeps and different frequencies and number of beeps to identify the type of pn junction that you're uh, looking at you don't need a display at all now I've, I've given it some more thought and i'm going to use the display on the new version because if you look at it it is narrow you know it is very narrow it'll fit nicely on the reverse side of the board to the uh, to the microcontroller so I'm going to be using that. I'll probably not need some other components that I have on here. Uh, if I use the sleep mode, I will be using that side button anyway, because I'll probably use that as an interrupt to bring it out of sleep mode and then, you know, be able to switch the polarity because that's another issue that was raised. You don't need, you can actually create a reversal a polarity reversal with the programming using some, um, well, sort of an H bridge. And I agree, but since I'm going to have a switch anyway, I figured I'd probably probably use it to um, to flip the polarity. And I won't be using the relay anymore because that does draw about 15 milliamps of current. I think I'm probably going to be using this um, 4066. It's a quad analog switch. CD4066, it's CMOS, so it does, doesn't draw that much current. And you can wire these four single pole, single, single pole, what is it, single pole, single throw switches. You, there is a way of wiring them as a double pole, double throw, which is exactly how the relay was wired. So it can reverse the polarity. So that's the other change. Uh, what else is there? I'm trying to think of what other suggestions there were. The actual uh, constant current source idea, there's a possibility of using a little three-leg, three-pin chip. I might consider that, but I'm not sure. The point is, here is the board that I have. And as you probably know, the one you have is better than the one you want. And I'm going to build this up. I know it's a little bit of a folly, considering that I already know that there's going to be a different version. But the whole idea of prototyping is to test to see what it is that you need to improve. And some of the improvements have been already listed and they're all theoretical, but I want to see this thing in action. I want to make sure it works. I want to see if there are any other ideas that um, get uh, produced from working with it. So I'm going to build this and then I'm going to do a few experiments and show you and perhaps we'll uh, develop some more ideas for the new version. All right, let me get cracking. I shouldn't have called this the beep beep, I should have called it the Frankenstein because it looks a little bit, yeah, prototypey. And from this build we can start seeing some of the shortcomings which um, I've mentioned before and which some of you mentioned as well. Now what did I do here? I built up this board, I didn't put in some of the capacitors which for a test like this I don't need. Uh, I didn't put in that uh, filter cap which is there to, you know, absorb any sharp dips. I said noise in the previous video and somebody wrapped my knuckles. Yeah, okay. And uh, the decoupling there, the 100 uh, nanofarad caps are also not in there. So that's really the only components that I did not populate. There's that one as well. But everything else is here. We've got the switch, which is a nice little on-off switch, which fits on the edge there. It's the 90 degree one. And it came out perfectly. And I've got the uh, display on here. I did manage to solder on there, even with the Arduino in. I did not uh, solder all the Arduino pins. I just soldered the pins that are used because I will be taking this out again. Uh, the beeper or the buzzer. I've got the uh, battery on a bit of foam because there is some. there are some wires, some pins going through. I didn't want it to touch the, the board. That was one of the uh, shortcomings I mentioned. We've got that, uh, well, there's the relay. We've got that switch on the side, which is the polarity flip switch. And this will be held, would be held something like this. You would test it and you'd be able to just click the polarity uh, reversal. I've got these LEDs sort of put on here just to show you which of these um, 
sides is the positive terminal when this thing flips. So yeah, that's, that's it. Let me switch it on and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's open. And let me show you the other probe. Now the other probe is something I designed and 3D printed because I wanted a probe and I wanted an LED on there. I wanted this LED to, this one is going to be right by the probe itself, the main probe coming out of the body of the, uh, of the device. And you can, you can see it there. And when I flip the switch, it reverses it. You see that? I want to be able to see which one is positive. And that works perfectly fine. I found um, this is actually some sort of audio cable that I had lying around. It's got three wires in there. I have not connected the shield to ground, which I probably will in the final version. But one wire goes to the probe and the other two go to the LED. When, uh, because these colors are a little bit iffy, I had to test, make sure that the polarity of the LED was, was right. It just determined which wires I soldered on here. And this thing is working. Now look at that. This is uh, obviously, this wire is showing some resistance instead of showing a perfect short. What I've got here is actually a, um, it's a rivet that I've sharpened to a point. This thing is very, very sharp, probably dangerously so. And I will be using a similar one on this side because when you do want to test it, when you don't want to use it, you want to be able to just push it in there and then check, make sure that um, the thing is beeping for something and that you can flip the polarity and you'll see the polarity flip. It's actually pretty cool. It works. Okay, let me show you the result testing some diodes. And I've purposely flipped some of these polarities around so that we can test it. I'm not sure which polarity is which. Okay, that is a silicon, 0.53. There's a Schottky or germanium. And I had to flip the polarity for that. So we know that this is the positive in this case. Okay, let's try this one. That's another shot key of germanium. And I know that this is the positive. It actually is correct because I can see the, the little bar on there. Oh, this one's also reversed. Silicon, reversed. There's an LED. Oh, we've got the right polarity for a change. This is the positive. And here are those funny transistors that I had. That's germanium, that's the one leg, and that's the other one. And this is a, I can't see the legs, this is a silicon. So that's obviously not the... See, I can... determine which one is the base because I can see the polarity. Okay, the result in a rather strange demonstration with this, uh, switch that off, with this monster in my hands shows that this thing works, the concept works. And I did try it on a uh, amplifier board that I have there. It works perfectly well in circuit as well. Few shortcomings. Well, obviously this is not a proper probe. And uh, when I first touch it, when I touch it, it sometimes doesn't make perfect connection. So you get like 0.1 volts or something. So it beeps as a germanium, whereas in fact it's a short circuit. But that's something that's easily overcome. Just improve the probes. And this probe here will be similar to this one, except it'll be shorter. You'll probably see it as something like that in line with the board itself. So I think I've got lots of food for thought. And... Um, I've got a good basis to try and improve this thing because I do want to build it and I promised you I would share these files but in view of the fact that this board is really has really turned out to be just a prototype what I'm going to do is work on the improved version and when I have that completed I'll do the usual which is I'll order the boards I will build it up I will then test it and then I will show you and demonstrate it for you and when I demonstrate it and I'm happy with it, I will have the board designs to share with you, the final schematic to share with you, bill of materials to share with you, 
and also the 3D print files for this body. And it's going to be a lot smaller than this, probably the same length because you need it for your hand. This, the whole idea is that you are able to click it like that and probe at the same time. But uh, it'll probably be narrower. It doesn't need to be this big. I've been thinking about actually still using this battery even with that very low power chip because I can make a sort of tubular body exactly the width of this and I've, sh I've tried that. It would be something like that with this profile but the length of it because that fits right in there. And the idea would be you'd have the body with the electronics on the front and the battery would slip in the back and click in place and then you just close the back. This is a good size if you are working with it. This is a sort of good size. If you imagine this to be like a cylinder, albeit a rectangular one, um, this is a good size to work with. You don't want something too small that sort of slips out of your hands. And if I've got the size, why not use a battery that's going to last a very, very long time? Alternatively, I can do what I mentioned earlier, which is to use a little LiPo battery that I could then just charge. Every time I wanted to charge, I connect this to a USB-C, it charges the battery, and then, ah, depending on the current draw that I get, it'll last a long time. I do know that these buzzers do draw some current, quite a bit of current. I'm not sure exactly how many milliamps. Um, I know that the uh, CMOS chip, the CD4066 that I'm going to use, uses very low current as well. I've got these LEDs, these are ultra bright, and at the moment, what I've used here, I designed it for 2.2K current limiting, but I've used a 10K current limiting. So what you were seeing on here, that LED was actually being limited by 10K, which um, gives us something like less than half a milliamp through these uh, ultra bright LEDs. And you can still see it very, very well. So yeah, I, I, this is the phase that I love. Um, I did this with the external BFO. I did about three versions until I finally was satisfied it, and I used it all the time. So I finally get to the version that I like. I am going to probably do a similar project or similar development with this. You know, get the second version, make sure that that's what I want. When I have it done and completed, I'll then share it with you. And then it's up to you if you want to build it yourself. All right, folks. That is it for now. That is it for now. I've got Frankenstein to play with. I'll be uh, rebuilding this thing on the breadboard with the new chip and I'll have to work on new programming because I'll still be using the Arduino IDE, the Arduino interface to program that chip or that um, MCU, that board. But it obviously is a different type of, uh, it's a different microprocessor. So it uses a few little tricks that are different. It's going to be fun. And hopefully I'll be able to show you just how much fun I had in the very near future because the next project is a tube radio and I'm really looking forward to starting on that one. All right, folks, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for all your suggestions. And um, I do read all comments and I've learned a hell of a lot from uh, the interactions. That's the whole purpose of a channel like this. I am not a university. This is not a teaching channel. This is a mutual learning channel. And with most of these projects, I probably learn more than you do. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon, PayPal. Links are in the description below. Bye for now, and most of all, stay safe.